Hi, my name's Brad Ladwig and welcome to this video where we're going to talk about some of the research we do here in the Barrow Centre at Imperial College London. So the research I'm going to talk about today is gas separation. So gas separation is really important, especially in industry, and one, that, one way that we can do it is using membranes. So membranes are when we make a very thin layer of a material and they can be used to separate, for example, gas mixtures by pushing the gas through very small holes in the material. And if all the holes are the same size and the gas molecules are very different in size, so some molecules are very small, some are very large, the small ones can go through and the large ones will be rejected and that gives us a great separation. So remember that works well if you've got small molecules and big ones. Sometimes however there are very important separations like carbon dioxide and nitrogen, so two gases that we would very much like to separate but the molecules are very similar in size. So using this approach of size-based separation doesn't work. So for that we need to look at new and interesting types of materials. So one type of material that we work with a lot in our group is metal organic frameworks. And the particular type of metal organic framework that we're working with are light responsive metal organic frameworks. So these are materials where if you shine a light onto them, they will either take up or, or desorb or let go of some of the absorbed molecules. And these particles in particular that we work with are, are very good at absorbing carbon dioxide. They like to have carbon dioxide absorbed into them and onto the surface of the pores. Uh, the GUC62 is the light responsive materials made from the copper as the metal and the azobenzene tetracarboxylic acid as the ligand. Mm -hmm. And it is one of the MOFs that is designed to hydrogen separation as hydrogen storage, but people never really look into how they are really light responsive. So in our group that we try to elucidate these particular materials because we have a knowledge that this might be a light responsive and so in our group we have the testing cell which has the UV light embedded inside the cell and we design this cell in custom made um, because we think that by illuminating directly in situ then we get a more powerful UV light illuminating the membrane during our permeation and also we equip our testing cell with the water cooling loop system because we know that if we use the UV light inside the cell that it will generate heat in the permeation cell so it's a really our newly designed membrane testing cell for this particular project. But what we've done here that's very interesting is put them into a mixed matrix membrane. And for the very first time, we've shown that if you shine a light on that membrane while you're testing it in a gas permeation experiment, you can change the separation properties of that membrane. So it makes a light responsive gas separation membrane. We have some results from this work that are going to be published very soon and the uh, are very, very interesting. One thing that has been shown through doing experiments with very careful controls, so testing just the polymer or just the polymer with some particles in there that are not light responsive and comparing those results to our polymer with our light responsive particles in there, we can see that there is a clear significant difference, an enhancement in the separation properties when we put light responsive particles into the polymer membrane. The project that I worked on was about light responsive materials and incorporating them into membranes for gas separation. So in the laboratory I prepared the materials, I prepared the PCN250 that we worked with and that took quite a while so that took up a lot of time and then I also prepared the mixed matrix membranes. Working with researchers was really amazing. I hadn't had that much uh, experience in research and it gave me a new light of what I can do in, as a career with chemical engineering. So not just going into industry or oil and gas but actually working with um, state-of-the-art technology and 
doing new things, things that nobody's done before.